This week, Chief Jerry Mills is chatting with Alaska State Trooper Drew Massey. Drew is the son of our very own Lieutenant Christopher Massey. Drew's grandfather is Chief Joe Massey of the Waterville Police Department, who is also present for this chat, as well as Drew's uncle, Chris Tupper of the Maine State Police, who also called in for the chat. So we're all over the state of Maine today. We're in Alaska. Uh, Drew Massey's here. Drew, can you hear me? I can. All right, excellent. So what I have here is the king, the man, Chief Massey <laughs> of Waterville PD. Um, he, he's, he's the one who started this whole thing, I think. His son, Chris Massey, who's our very own lieutenant with the Augusta Police Department. We've got uh, Drew Massey, who's uh, Chris's son, Joe's grand, grandson in Alaska. He's a new, new state trooper there. And we've got Chris Tupper, who's his main state trooper. So we're gonna chat with them today and uh, talk about none other than law enforcement. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, first of all, uh, I'd like to know, with all you guys, Joe, you started this. What got you into law enforcement, Joe? Well, I think uh, what interests me the most is uh, that it was a job that just didn't have a routine to it, that uh, there were different aspects of uh, law enforcement that I thought that would be exciting to me. And I thought it was a job that really could fulfill the needs that uh, I needed to get out of the job. Um, I worked construction early on and I found out in the winter time that was pretty tough. So I thought uh, law enforcement would be a better calling for me and it's been 40 years and I certainly have not uh, regretted one day of it. The rest of you, maybe, maybe mine is Chris because he's the uncle, but uh, you gotta, your father had to have some influence, Chris, on, on your decision. Yeah, absolutely. I grew up around it, not only my father, but his brother, my uncle, uh, worked for a Waterville PD as well. And then, um, you know, my other uncle, who would be uh, married to my father's sister, yeah. he was also a Waterville officer. So I grew up around that as well. Yeah. Excellent. And Drew, uh, in Alaska, what was, what was uh, besides your uh, dad and granddad, obviously, had a huge influence in your uncle, uh, what was your calling for this? Uh, my calling? I mean, obviously, same similar story, in and out of the department all the time as a kid, obviously helps influence it. But the reason why I'm in Alaska, I mean, the military sent me up here, and I think the big calling for me up here was how difficult it was to even just become an applicant up here. So that was part of my influence on staying up this far away. Interesting. I'm glad you mentioned that because thank you for your service. That is what brought you up there. So uh, that's very important. And, and you decided to stay. Is that uh, that's uh, obviously a, a big thing. Is it much different in Alaska? I mean, we're both getting snow right now, right? So it can't be much different than Maine. But uh, give, give me some of the differences. Um, honestly, the big difference is how spread out everything is. So Fairbanks isn't a big city, but you know, Anchorage is our biggest city, and that's a six-hour drive away from Fairbanks. So everything's just very spread out. Um, the climate-wise is pretty similar. I think we get a little colder. Uh, but, I mean, it's that same, same feel to me as Maine as far as, you know, you go into the town, you can still get away from the towns pretty easily. Um, we're just very spread out. That's kind of what makes us unique. Drew, talk to me a little bit about your patrol area. Area, Tell us where you patrol and, and what you're seeing for the types of crimes and that type of thing. Uh, for us up here, so we typically have four to six troopers working a shift. And we cover the landmass equivalent to, I think we're just smaller than the size of New Jersey is what we cover. So we experience pretty unique calls. I've run into people that haven't seen law enforcement in over a decade. Um, we have similar calls of service. We cover parts of the city of Fairbanks. We cover the North Pole City. Um, we cover like Asalto, which is a smaller town. So I've experienced quite a variety of calls. We, but if you come work up here, I mean, I've been exposed to a lot of different things. I mean, law enforcement's very unique. I feel it's no matter where you work, no matter what day you go in, it's not going to be the same as yesterday. So it's pretty unique up here. Chris uh, Tupper, how about uh, what you're seeing? Uh, you're obviously, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, because you're not uh, just working the road, but you're, uh, uh, what exactly do you do for the state police? Through my career, I've all different positions, uh, from patrol, I'm due 
computer crime. We experience much of the same calls. We have a lot of variety. I got a I got a question that's burning for me, Drew. Is uh, Drew Massey? Is what? Uh, you just got out of the academy. How many weeks ago? Oh, uh, was it three or four now? Yeah, I was flying, so I kind of lost track. <laughs> yeah, really. Months. So it's four months. Yeah, <laughs> so it's not too long. Anyway, talk to us about, a little bit about uh, that training experience and and kind of how you ship you've shifted into working on your own and that type of thing. What's that been like? So our academy for all law enforcement was 16 weeks, and the troopers stay for two more. Our academy is a little unique though because we do seven days a week, so you never get to leave. Um, then we do what we call a trooper basic, which was only two weeks. Um, part of that for us was like a little survival island where they dropped us out on an island for, I believe it was three days, two nights, and it was whatever you could fit in a sandwich baggie is all you got to use. Um, from there, we do a pretty extensive field training program, which I, it's pretty similar to what you guys do over in Maine. Um, it was about a month for three phases, each phase about a month with one training officer, the next month you switch to a different training officer. That way you get to taste three different varieties of how law enforcement's done and you can kind of help build and know what you want to do is when you're out on your own. What advice do you have for uh, young man Drew here going through uh, the starting his career? You guys are, are uh, midway or or uh, with several years on. What advice, start with the chief here, what advice do you have for Drew uh, moving forward in his career? Well, certainly, <clears throat> I think what you got to keep up front and, and foremost is what your mission is, and all that's protect and serve, and then protect and serve the public. Uh, and I think it's having a good, healthy outlook. Even though we work uh, every single day and we see those who are less fortunate for us, you know, they're out there every single day, they're struggling in their life, and I need, you know, that compassion needs to really, really come forward. So it, it's really that, um, you know, focus on people and understanding, you know, the social aspects and dynamics of each community. And, you know, I, I would say my advice is to, you know, keep that in the forefront. Make sure you use a lot of compassion and respect. Uh, and look at your career as, uh, you know, as a journey that you're going to start here. And hopefully uh, your goal is at the end to achieve whatever uh, you see that uh, you'd like to do, whether that's going on to a detective or a supervisor or eventually one day heading an organization. you got to have those goals, I think, so uh, it doesn't stagnate you. Uh, and, and the job becomes then redundant for you. Great advice, tough act to follow, Lieutenant. What uh, <laughs> What do you have for advice for the boy? No, I kind of the same thing. I mean, uh, be fair, be compassionate, um, have some hobbies, um, stay healthy. Very proud of him. Uh, you know, everybody is in the family. Um, you know, for where he's at right now, and just to continue that on. You know, like uh, you know, like my father said, and you know, it's kind of been there's three generations currently working right now, plus his uncle. Um, that's all of us working at the same time is very rare. Uh, having three generations in law enforcement is very common, but all working at the same time is pretty rare. So, um, you know, he's got a good head on his shoulders, and as long as you uh, do the right thing, even when nobody's looking, you'll be fine. Great advice, and Uncle Chris, take us away. I'm just going to uh, kind of reiterate what you said. Stay true to, to your core value. Um, take care of yourself and dress in a healthy way. And enjoy uh, enjoy the community that you live in. And I think that will lead to a in successful career. Hopefully for Drew. Hey, hey Drew, one question. What's that? When does the sun come up up there? <laughs> uh, it's 11 o'clock, about 20 minutes ago it came up. <laughs> when does the sun go down? 3.30ish. <laughs> <laughs> <30 -ish. laughs> yeah, make sure you take plenty of vitamin D, right? Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Hey, everybody up here works nights. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, this has been great. I appreciate everybody. Um, Drew, we're going to spare you the happy birthday song, but I would like to say it is Drew's birthday today. Yeah. We've all already wished him a happy birthday, so I want to close it out like that. 
And uh, once again, thank you everybody for tuning in for another edition of Chat with the Chief. We'll see you next time.